Welcome back to This Week in Bevy. This week, we've got people making use of observers and hooks, first games being deployed, procedural generation and animation, and more. The rendering channel has been talking about technology like Material X. We'll see a number of different showcases for UI, including Bevy UI, text to speech, and Quill. While other people have been implementing papers and talks, including destructible stress environment systems and water simulation. Bevy Game Jam number five theme voting is underway. You can sign up to participate here on itch.io, vote on themes in the Jam Theme Voting Discord channel, and find a team to participate with in Jam Find a Team in Discord. And with that, let's get into it. Bevy 0.14 introduced component hooks, which enable upholding invariants when components are added, inserted, and removed. Defining these hooks required foregoing the automatic derivation of the derived component and using a manual implementation or a world-based implementation. As of 14.005, new attributes have been added to the component macro. This enables defining hooks as regular functions that are attached to an implementation using the new component attribute, as you can see here. 14.071 enables random sampling from the surfaces of triangle meshes with a new mesh triangles method. The implementation of uniform mesh sampler caches the triangle's distribution of areas so that after its initial setup, sampling is allocation free. This again is on a collection of triangles, so this function can fail in certain scenarios. The most obvious requirement, meaning your mesh has to be defined in either triangle list or triangle strip topology, which is probably what you're using. But if you're not sure, there's a list of all the topologies over on the WGPU docs. And a new demo called Physics in Fixed Time Step shows how to properly handle player input, advance a physics simulation in a fixed time step, and display the results. Short warning for the next page, which does not have dark mode. The classic source for how and why this demo exists, the way that it does, is fix your time step, shown here. And more Bevy-centric fixed time step information is available in the Bevy Cheapbook. One especially useful section in the Cheapbook is the should I put my systems in update or fixed update schedules section. And of course, work continues on the experimental virtual geometry feature. This week, we see some demos for mixed software and hardware rasterization, which is already much faster than hardware, and there's plenty of opportunity for optimization still. More information about this one is available in the Discord thread. And onto some rendering. Material X is a rendering-related technology for, well, materials at a high level. This includes concepts like shaders, textures, and the data that they all need. This technology recently got added to Blender's USD export. Which brings us to why we're even talking about it. Material X has been getting a few mentions in the rendering channel in Bevy Discord lately, and an initial parser for the spec was created, as you can see here. This is, of course, a proof of concept, but a successful proof of concept it is, including this demo, which shows off Bevy loading. Whether or not Material X makes an impact on Bevy's rendering implementation is yet to be seen. But for those that are interested, there is some interesting development and discussion happening in the rendering dev channel. And up last in our overview, Testing all of the combinations of all of the different ways Bevy's features can be enabled or disabled in combination can be pretty hard to do manually. There are quite a lot of them. Work to automate this kind of testing can be found in this the Bevy flock slash flag frenzy repo. And this work in progress has already caught its first bug. So looking great on the front for automation. And on to our showcases this week. Quartz v0.6.1 has RFFT and IFFT nodes, which are Fourier transform nodes, which enables spectral processing. In this video, you hear the input signal analyzed, then each bin is delayed by a different time, which is spectral delay. This demo is audio based, so if you would like to hear the spectral delay audio, definitely go check it out in the Discord thread. Also note that you could go see this on GitHub instead, because it is open source. Our next demo shows off avian physics sensors and collision events, that is the collision started and collision ended events, used to power higher level enter and exit region observer trigger. These higher level triggers allow enabling follow player if close enough style behavior and are generalizable to other things like stationary turrets with distant sensors. And Rainworld is known for its procedural animation. This demo recreates the kelp creature from Rainworld using avian physics. This is an X4 inspired space economy sandbox simulation. The code for this one is available on GitHub under an AGPL3 license. And fair warning, we're heading to a bright page next for itch.io. Druid's Quest is a puzzle game, which is the author's first game. This is published after six months of work, in which you push crates around as a druid to solve puzzles. The game is downloadable for Windows on itch.io. And this procedurally generated forest was built using Perlin noise from the noise crate and has a day-night cycle. It currently hosts about 75,000 entities. 
Next up, we've got some waving foliage implemented with a custom vertex shader that offsets the position over time. The code for this one is available on GitHub and the current build of this game even is available on the GitHub releases. Script Grip is a ship-based physics puzzle game that got some updates to its physics model this week, resulting in smooth sliding on surfaces and removing ghost collisions. And this destructible environment is based on a 2011 GDC talk by one of the developers of Red Faction Armageddon. The talk was called Living in a Stressful World, Real-Time Stress Calculation for Destroyable Environments. The stress systems is what's causing the hanging pieces to fall off since they weigh too much for the supporting pieces to hold. And moving on, we've got some screenshots from Hello Bevy, which is a Bevy game template that recently got key mappings and text-to-speech support. Text-to-speech is powered by the TTS crate and works with keyboard and gamepad navigation. The navigation is powered by Bevy Alt UI Navigation Lite and uses a custom input system powered by Leafwing Input Manager. Up next, we've got an end puzzle with walls puzzle game. This game is available for download on itch.io and was done as a final project for a computer science degree. The code is expected to be shared after submission, and in the meantime, you can head over to itch.io to download it. Our next demo is one I can really get behind. Instead of logging out large amounts of data, this demo uses a custom plotter.log implementation to show graphs when things go wrong, allowing the introspection of much larger amounts of data than you could read out from a terminal output. And we're back again with water simulation. More progress on this water simulation that we saw last week, including an implementation of the Philips Oceanographic Spectrum in 2D using Rust FFT, the second project we've seen use Rust FFT this week, for the inverse fast Fourier transform on the CPU. The diagnostics display that we can see here on the shallower water is powered by IES Perf UI, and more information available about the techniques used to simulate the water are available in the Discord thread. This UI, which is built with vanilla Bevy UI, has a nice thocky audio to it. Of course, since this is an interactive demo that has audio, you'll have to go watch it yourself if you want to listen to it. And next up, we've got a 2D tile-based game with a new gradient representing the sky. The line gizmos in this image showcase a chunking mechanism as we see the cube go way up into the sky where the color is bright and all the way back down where the color is significantly whiter. And this next demo is one that I am really excited about. This is the latest demo for Quill, a reactive UI framework. No graphs, rounded corners, color pickers, and more that are reminiscent of polished UIs like Blender's No Graphs are included in this demo. This is a lot of really exciting work and you can find Quill over on GitHub. And last up in our showcases, we've got Hyda, that's H-Y-D-A, which is HTML and CSS converted to Bevy UI. This is an in-progress system and I've chosen one of the later updates throughout the week to show off here. On the left, you can see body, paragraph, and H3 tags, and on the right, you can see the rendered output inside of Bevy using Bevy UI. And we've got a fairly short update of crates this week. The vast majority of updates that I've seen are updates to 0.14. So there are way too many of those to cover. If you are looking for a 0.14 update for your crate of choice, I suggest that you go to either crates.io and see if they're published yet or to the GitHub repo to see if they're working on it. That said, we do have some brand new crates this week, including Bevy Translation Table, which is a crate for performing simple key value translations with only the currently needed locale loaded into memory. WGSL LN lets you write WGSL in Rust with support for compile time error checking and global imports. While Bevy Autoplay is automated integration testing based on recorded playtesting sessions, that's right, you can have somebody play your game, record their session, and then write tests against it. The plugin allows you to record the playtest sessions, save them to a file, and write feature or integration tests that assert against that session, which allows you to perform automated testing on real play sessions, including being able to test for regressions in CI. The sessions can also be played back at multiplied speed. I am personally, honestly, really looking forward to seeing this one as it progresses. And finally, we've got Bevy GLTF Trait, which is a fork of the Bevy GLTF crate that you would find in the Bevy repo, but it makes GLTF customizable through a trait on load. This includes activities like changing the material used, editing meshes, lights, and app. As always, we have all of the pull requests that were merged if you'd like to look at the full list, as well as pull requests that were opened and issues that were opened this week. There are some interesting component lifecycle hooks and observer triggers and other kinds of related work happening, including the on replaced 
in addition to the on add, on insert, and on removed. So as always, looking forward to that next week, if it gets merged, and I'll see you in the next one.